If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, Elon Musk's SpaceX must be very pleased with the Chinese space program. Cast Space had an opening ceremony of their manufacturing base in Nansha Gangzhou on January 9th, and this is their new crew capsule that was presented. If you think you're having deja vu while looking at the image, you're not wrong. The new Chinese spacecraft resembles another spacecraft that's carried astronauts to space for three years. That's right, it looks similar to SpaceX's Dragon capsule. To wit, China seems to have cloned the SpaceX Dragon. And with that being said, what's the reaction of SpaceX CEO Elon Musk? Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Cast Space, a commercial spinoff of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, is already developing rockets for commercial satellite launches and announced in 2021 that it wants to send people up into space, albeit briefly. According to a press release, Cast Space is working on a single-stage reusable rocket that would take as many as seven passengers on a 10-minute ride up above the Karman line at 62 miles or 100 kilometers, which is generally held to be the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Its name is ZK-6, it's 15 meters high and 3.35 meters in diameter with four windows. ZK-6 is powered by five 15T XY1 engines. It can be reused more than 30 times. All of us can see that this ZK-6 remarkably resembles the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule, right? In addition, ZK-6 also has grid fins near the top of the rocket, which would guide the rocket's descent. And instead of landing legs, the rocket would be caught by an arm attached to the launch tower following the concept unveiled by SpaceX for its massive Starship Super Heavy rocket. The crew capsule will meanwhile descend to Earth with the aid of three parachutes. Chinese space tourism operators will lift off for the first time in 2025 at between 280,000 and 400,000 per suborbital seat. That's according to the founder of Beijing-backed commercial launch service provider Cast Space, Yang Yaiquang. Well, they are a really good copycats, and keep in mind, this is not the first time China developed a rocket that looks like something that SpaceX already makes. A few months ago, Wang Shijun, president of the nation's Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, gave a presentation showing off a concept for a two-stage methane liquid launch system that looks suspiciously familiar. Clearly, the images in the slides bear a striking resemblance to the SpaceX Starship spacecraft. In all fairness, though, there are differences as well. CALT's launch system is designed to carry about 20 tons to low Earth orbit, while SpaceX's mammoth spacecraft aims at carrying a whopping 100 tons. There also appear to be differences in how the engines generate thrust. In 2020, China even completed a test flight of new spacecraft that resembles the Crew Dragon. The mission is one of the first steps the Chinese are taking to prepare for future lunar missions. The spacecraft launched atop a Long March 5B, China's most powerful rocket. During the test, the spacecraft soared to an altitude of about 5,000 miles above Earth. The trial, which was similar to the initial test flight of Orion that NASA completed in late 2014, was heralded as a success. Now, what do you think tech billionaire Elon Musk's response is to this issue? In fact, Musk may just be smiling. Elon Musk says SpaceX avoids using patents to build rockets because they're for the weak in block innovation. No, we don't really patent things. Patents are for the weak. Musk took TV host Jay Leno on a tour around SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas, showing him some of the company's Raptor engines, which are designed to fit the Starship spacecraft. He said the engines were built by SpaceX in California. It's not the first time the billionaire has criticized the use of patents. In an interview with Wired in 2012, he said SpaceX has essentially no patents. He added that it would be farcical if the company published its patents because the Chinese would just use them as a recipe book. In a Tesla conference call eight years ago, Musk said patents were a sign that a company was failing to innovate fast enough. Musk also said in the CNBC interview that SpaceX used strong stainless steel to make the rocket. In response to a question about whether the company had patents for the material, Musk said no. Musk also said patents were normally used as a blocking technique to prevent other companies from progressing. They just stop others from following you, he told Leno during the tour most patents are BS. However, after all, we can't say that China space is weak. China's main space contractor is working towards making the country a leading space power, with a focus on developing capabilities, space infrastructure, and self-reliance. 
Wu Yangxing, chairman of the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, or CASC, that's the country's main space contractor, outlined a series of goals in a lecture broadcast by China Central Television December 20th. Among the ambitions are known plans for a crewed lunar landing, along with other exploration and transportation goals, while stressing the importance of space infrastructure and developing capabilities such as on-orbit servicing and building a space governance system. The plans are presented as following a strategic plan of Communist Party of China General Secretary Tsai Jinping to build a strong space nation. The plan is developing within a broader Xi-driven push for technological and economic self-reliance amid the U.S. taking steps to decouple from economic engagement with China. The overarching ambition is to make China one of the world's main aerospace powers by 2030 and become a fully comprehensive space power by 2045. CASC ranked 322 in this year's Fortune 500 list and has previously stated plans to make China a global leader in space technology by 2045, a focus seen by some as a challenge to the U.S. CASC claims to comprehensively improve China's ability to use space by continuing to upgrade and improve our space infrastructure, build an in-orbit service and maintenance system, actively promote the construction of a next-generation space infrastructure system according to machine translation, and achieve efficient low-cost transportation by 2030. Wu stated that challenges exist, notably including conditions created by the U.S. restarting the Great Power Competition, the so-called Wolf Clause being kept out of the ISS project, and Chinese aerospace firms being added to U.S. export blacklist. The U.S. is also seen by Wu as seeking to see strategic resources, including specific orbits, locations, and radio frequencies. The presentation highlights both long-term goals with apparent strong political backing, but also that China is focused on reaching targets and developing capabilities independently rather than relying on international cooperation to a great degree. In terms of near-term goals, Wu Yangxing stated plans for a crewed lunar landing by 2030 establishing the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, in the 2030s, following three Chang'e robotic landing missions during that decade. China is also, however, seeking partnerships for the IRLS, which will be developed alongside and separate to the U.S. Artemis program. China also plans a Mars sample return mission in the next 10 to 15 years, suggesting a possible delay to earlier stated plans to deliver material from the Red Planet to Earth in 2031. Missions targeting the head and tail of the heliopause and separately Jupiter and Uranus are also noted. A CASC-led program for studying exoplanets named the Mayan Project is also mentioned. Wow, it looks so cool, right? And do you find this familiar? I know what you're thinking, but this is not Starship. In fact, it's only a mini Starship developed by Space Epoch, a new Chinese startup. Well, it's hardly breaking news that China's long adored and envied the tracks of SpaceX. Musk has even consistently welcomed competition, and China's entering the arena with its own brand of reusable orbital rockets. China has set massive targets to meet in space transport. They plan to meet them using the idea of reusables. So is China ready to launch? And how does it compare to SpaceX's Starship rocket? How will they surpass the U.S. in space? By copying SpaceX. Space Epoch is a most recent new entrant into China's nascent commercial launch sector and has big ambitions. It secured an undisclosed amount of angel round of funding in August last year and later conducted pressure tests on a 3-meter diameter and 4-meter diameter thin wall stainless steel tanks. Its press releases state it's determined to become the leader of China's interplanetary transportation system and contribute to the country's national space infrastructure and requirement for increased launch capacity. Importantly, Space Epoch recently performed a series of tests of a 4.2-meter diameter stainless steel propellant tank combined with a Longyun 70-methane liquid oxygen engine developed by engine maker Zhizhou Yangjian. The test took place at Zhizhou Yangjian's test site in the Anhui province. The tests are part of Beijing-based Space Epoch's earlier revealed plans to develop a 64-meter tall stainless steel launcher capable of lifting 6.5 tons to a 1,100-kilometer attitude sun-synchronous orbit. A launcher would be able to be reused up to 20 times. The static fire test included ignition and restart test and ignition with low levels of propellant. 
The complete success of the test also marks with the breakthrough of stainless steel storage tank plus liquid oxygen methane technology, they've laid a solid foundation for the subsequent rocket flight test and also contributed to the diversified development and technological innovation of my country's commercial aerospace, Jiju Youngyang said in a statement. SpaceX is meanwhile edging towards its first orbital launch attempt of the 120-meter-high, 9-meter-diameter Starship at its Starbase test site in Boca Chica, Texas. In other comparisons, the new Chinese vehicle will therefore be much smaller and less powerful than the SpaceX Starship. Starship is constructed out of 304L stainless steel, which has a higher corrosion resistance than regular steel. It's widely used because of the ease which it can be formed into various shapes. The Space Epoch rocket is made of a thin-walled stainless steel independently developed by Beijing Aero Advanced Technology Company Limited through the research of 23 kinds of domestic and foreign stainless steel material. Both rockets are constructed in similar fashion by welding together several stainless steel rings. Besides, it's understood the company is buying methane engines from another Chinese startup, engine maker Zhizhou Yangjian, meaning Space Epoch does not have to develop its own engines. Zhizhou Yangjin is a rocket engine startup founded in 2017 and was earlier selected by the new Chinese launch startup Rocket Pi to power its Darwin 1 rocket, which could launch as soon as this year. While the Raptor is capable of producing up to 2,300 kilonewtons of thrust at sea level, Longin produces a maximum thrust of 687 kilonewtons at sea level. The sea level and vacuum variants of Raptor have specific impulses of 327 and 363 seconds and for Longyun, it's 290 and 350 seconds. Anyway, Longyun is currently the liquid oxygen methane engine with the largest thrust in China and also the only comprehensive breakthrough in rocket recovery and reuse technology in China, the high thrust liquid oxygen methane engine. As well as being inspired by SpaceX in terms of the combination of stainless steel tanks and methane LOX engines, Space Epoch is also using an iterative approach using a style akin to the SN serial number designations for Starship development. XZH1D1 was used for the recent combined test system. XZH1D2 will be used for the first suborbital sea splashdown recovery test during 2023. The ultimate coincidence is at the target. The firm says it's targeting markets including point-to-point -point transportation, space tourism, space station construction, deep space exploration, and planetary defense. Well, it's not the first time China copied Starship. The state-owned Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology, or SAST, a major subsidiary of China's main space contractor, CASC, is apparently considering using Zhizhou Yangjin's reusable 70-ton thrust open-cycle Longyun engine for its own potential answer to the Starship challenge. CASC's other major rocket-making arm, the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, or CALT, has also presented a concept for a launcher drawing on the vision of Starship. China's first methane LOX rocket and first commercial developed liquid launcher, Zuke-2, had a test flight last month. It failed to reach orbit, following an issue with second-stage Vernier engines. After all, Elon Musk and SpaceX have been incredibly successful, so it makes sense there would be those trying to figure out a so-called formula to his success so they could achieve it too, and China has arguably been trying to do just that. Despite limited direct cooperation, Chinese officials say they have learned important lessons by watching the American counterparts. Chinese officials are glad, for example, that they did not follow an early decision by NASA in the 1970s to build a large but costly space plane like the Space Shuttle. Instead, they've been impressed by the work of Elon Musk Rocket Company. In 2009, when I first learned about SpaceX in a meeting in the U.S., I was surprised. I'd never heard of this company when I was in the U.S. before. How did it grow into such a large company so quickly, Mr. Zhao Jinping, chief designer of China's crewed space program, said. From watching SpaceX, China's space officials see value in making reusable rockets and spacecraft. The space shuttle is very complicated, Mr. Zhao said. While the capsules China and SpaceX are using are relatively easier technology to ensure reliability and safety and also more economical. He later asserted that within a few years, we'll be able to achieve the reuse of re-entry capsules for our new generation spaceships. Developing reusable rocket technology in China has become even more important following considerable international criticism of his Long March 5B rockets, 
China allowed massive core boosters from these rockets to fall out of control to Earth while sending each of the three modules of the Tiangong space station into orbit. R. Nicholas Burns, the U.S. ambassador to China, said in an interview he had encouraged China to be more cautious about the uncontrolled re-entry of large rocket bodies. China bristled at the criticism of Long March's 5B core boosters. One caused damage during a test flight in 2020 when it fell in West Africa, but none of the rocket stages have hurt or killed anyone so far. At least one more launch of the rocket is planned in 2023 when the Zuntian telescope goes to orbit. Chinese officials say they don't just want to avoid uncontrolled re-entry, but to reuse rockets. The effort to develop a reusable spacecraft is running parallel to Chinese officials' plans to put astronauts on the moon. They've not announced a precise timetable, but have previously hinted it would not happen until later than 2030. The Pentagon predicted in August that China would surpass American capability in space as soon as 2045. I think it's entirely possible they could catch up and surpass us absolutely, said Lieutenant General Nina M. Armango, the staff director of the United States Space Force. And that was at a conference in Sydney the day before the launch of Shenzhou 15. The progress they've made has been stunning, stunningly fast. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Do you think China can surpass SpaceX? Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section down below because your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.